So hopefully everybody can see this okay. Ray, can you see it okay? Yes, it's fine. Great. Um, so um, I've covered the first slide. So we're talking about the MSc in Health Economics and Health Policy and MSc Health Economics and Econometrics. And Ray and I are the co-program leads. So first of all, then we just wanted to talk a little bit about why health economics is important. Um, so all around the world, we find that healthcare systems are being challenged to meet um, growing and unlimited patient needs. But at the same time, we have limits around the resources that are available in healthcare. So there's a, a limit around the staff, the hospitals, the medications that we can provide, etc. And so what health economists do is um, we play a key role in helping to work out what's the best way to provide healthcare and, and health, um, public health, et cetera, and medicines to help um, deal with some of these challenges. So we provide useful information to and, and analyses that will help inform decision-making and policy formation in the healthcare arena. So what we aim to do as health economists is ensure that our limited healthcare resources are used to achieve the maximum possible benefit. So we're looking to achieve the maximum we can in terms of improving people's health, given the scarce resources that we have to provide healthcare and treatments, etc. So that's what health economics is all about. So what are the aims of our MSc programmes? Um, so we aim to provide both theoretical um, understanding and practical skills um, in health economics. And it's important that we, we do both. So we want to give you a good grounding in the theory that's, that's behind health economics, but also give you those practical skills that you can go and use as a health economist or to in, in other areas that you might be working in. So for example, we have some people who want to um, be involved in um, decision-making for commissioning. Um, as I said, we provide advanced technical skills. Um, for example, we develop skills in um, economic modeling, um, in economic evaluation, um, and these are at the, the advanced level. And we were aiming to equip students to look at health issues from an economic perspective. And that's what I said in terms of the, giving that economic theory and those economic skills. And um, by the end of it, you'll have a good understanding of how um, health economics can inform healthcare decision-making. So what are the strengths of our MSc programme? Um, well, I think the first thing to note is that um, health economic skills are in great demand globally. Um, so not just in the UK, but all around the world, there's a scarcity of people who have health economic skills. Here in Birmingham, we have one of the longest running MSc programmes. Um, so it's, it started 23 years ago. Um, so we've got a good foundation in terms of understanding what works um, to give effective teaching and learning for students. We have a, a robust national and international reputation um, so we work with collaborators all around the world and nationally here in the UK. Um, very much on our course, the emphasis that we have is on training students so that they're really ready to work as health economists by the end of the programme. So um, a lot of emphasis within the course is, is on practical skills. So our um, students spend um, time in the computer lab, um, making sure that they can um, undertake analyses um, that are required as a health economist. Um, and so um, a lot of these skills are transferable. So for example, in critical appraisal, policy analysis, um, economic analysis, econometrics. Um, all of the staff here in Birmingham are research active and we're experienced as health economists. So if you have a look at our profiles um, on the web, you can see all the different areas that we're involved with. Um, we have close relationships with clinicians and decision makers, both here in the UK and globally. Um, so we've got um, effective collaborations um, in different parts of the world um, and very strong um, collaborations here in the UK. Um, so each year we um, measure our student satisfaction and we have a lot of work engaging with students to understand um, you know, any ways that we can improve the course. And we do have really good levels of student um, satisfaction. Sorry, I can't 
wants me to change my slides. There we are. Um, so this gives you just an idea of the structure for the health economics and health policy um, programme. So we have um, some core modules. So as you'd expect, an introductory module, some statistics modules, um, a module that focuses on the methods of economic evaluation, a, model, um, a module that focuses particularly on modelling, and then we've got a, a module that focuses on policy and um, policy analysis. As you can see here, there's a range of optional modules. So this is just a selection of them. Um, usually there's, there's more of this, more of them um, that the students can select from um, that are aligned to our program. And then finally, there's a dissertation and I've got um, a slide on the dissertation in a moment. Um, and this can be your own ideas or a, a staff suggested topic. And we do have an option for a placement as part of the dissertation. Um, so I think I've passed over the econometrics structure. Um, so as you can see, in terms of the core modules, they're quite similar. But for the econometrics program, we have core modules in microeconomics and econometrics and a similar range of optional modules. And again, for this program, there's a dissertation which um, focuses on the econometric skills that you would have learned as part of the programme. Um, as I mentioned, there's a dissertation um, that's undertaken as part of the programme. And this is undertaken uh, in the summer months after you've completed the taught um, modules of the programme. And this can really be your own topic idea, or it can be a staff suggested idea. So some students come with a really clear idea about what they want to do for their topic. Um, and it might be something that they um, feel that um, is going to help with their career. Um, but we do have some staff suggested topics as well. Um, there is an option for a placement. So um, last year we had um, students undertaking, um, well, last year was because of the pandemic, it was a virtual placement. Um, but we had virtual placements in pharmaceutical companies and consultancies. Um, and I think it's important to note that some students publish their dissertations. So here I've just got three um, dissertations that I managed to pull that, that um, students have been published. So the first one was a systematic review looking at interventions for postnatal depression. And um, the second was a mapping exercise looking at um, the ice capo, which is a new measure to um, measure um, um, capability, so um, well-being in, in people. And the last one was a modeling study um, that was looking at the comparing um, oral contraceptives compared to no hormonal treatment for endometriosis related pain. And um, so publishing the dissertations is something that we encourage um, and some students um, choose to do that. So we've just got a slide here about how the um, program runs. Um, so we have an intensive block of teaching um, for each module. Um, usually our days run from Monday um, 9 a.m through to Friday 5 p.m. Um, each 20 credit module has an assignment and um, uh, an exam, and each 10 credit module has an assignment or an exam. And the exams would take place in January or May. So we have students from a, a range of backgrounds, um, it's typically between 20 to 30 students, um, both from the UK and um, internationally. And we do have students that come from a wide range of disciplines and backgrounds, and we feel that this is a real strength of the course. Um, so students get to know each other and learn about healthcare systems in different countries. We have people coming from backgrounds in pharmacy, from pharmaceutical companies, people who've done economics before, and some people who've come from very different areas such as geography or chemistry. And so that gives a nice mix of students on the course and, and at least some really interesting discussions. We do have some medics and clinicians who undertake the course. So, for example, we've got somebody who's a GP who's undertaking the program at the moment. Um, if you're interested in the health economics and health policy program, then there's no requirement for any prior economics training. Um, so the requirement for the health economics and health policy program is a good undergraduate degree, but this can be within any discipline area. In terms of the careers that our alumni go on to, um, we usually find that our alumni are really successful in finding roles in the areas that they want to work in. Um, so, for example, working in um, healthcare organisations at the global or national or regional level. So, for example, we've got alumni working in the WHO, the World Health Organisation. Um, 
an insight here. <laughs> the UN min, and, and local ministries of health. Um, we've got um, people working in global, global pharmaceutical companies, um, consultancies, both here, consultancies both here and overseas. Um, we've got um, people working in health insurance companies, um, health services, research organizations, and a wide variety of industries outside health as well. So uh, a whole range of destinations that people have. Um, and as I said, um, people tend to be um, successful in finding, um, finding a role um, in the area that they're interested in. Um, so that's the end of my brief talk. I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have um, about the programme now, um, but there's also a link here for um, additional information about the programme. And also, you'll feel, please feel free to email both Ray and me if you have any specific queries that we can help with.